Welcome to Astronomy Daily, the podcast, Series 3, Episode 15. Ready to embark on a journey through space and the world of astronomy? Whether you're a seasoned stargazer or just looking to learn about our celestial neighbourhood, you're in the right place. Today, we'll navigate through a cluster of news stories that are as varied and fascinating as the cosmos itself. From twists in our quests, to explore frontiers, to telescopic discoveries that expand our understanding, we've got an itinerary to pique your curiosity. So, stow your tray tables and fasten your seatbelts. We're diving into news from the cosmos, lighting up the sky of our quest for knowledge. Stay with us as we explore the final frontier here on Astronomy Daily. The Astronomy Daily Podcast. Picture this. A Russian Soyuz spacecraft poised on the launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, its engines ready to roar to life, set to ferry a trio of intrepid spacefarers to the International Space Station. Tension is palpable. The countdown ticks away. Then, just as the word launch reverberates around mission control, an abrupt turn of events unfolds. In a dramatic twist of fate, the launch is automatically cancelled just a mere 20 seconds before the scheduled liftoff. An unsettling calm follows the initial shockwave of confusion. The crew, a Russian, a Belarusian and an American astronaut, all geared up for the ascent into orbit, they're suddenly grounded, safely extracted from what was almost their vessel to the stars. But what exactly tipped the scales from a routine launch to an urgent no-go? Well, the culprit was an alarmingly sudden slump in the current of a chemical power source. Sure, it's not every day you hear about a launch cancelled at the 11th hour. These rockets are designed to pierce the heavens after all. Anomalies this close to takeoff are rare, a testament to just how delicate and precise space travel truly needs to be. Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, downplayed the setback. They promptly rescheduled the mission, with space chief Yuri Borisov assuring all that such incidents, while tense, are part and parcel of the cosmic endeavour. Yet behind the scenes, one could only imagine the flurry of intense scrutiny and troubleshooting that surely followed. The stakes were high, not just for the trio aboard the Soyuz MS-25, particularly NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson, embarking on a six-month odyssey to conduct vital experiments, but also for cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky and Marina Vasilevskaya of Belarus, charged with the task of returning American Laurel O'Hara to Earth's embrace. A grace period of sorts now hovers over the Baikonur Cosmodrome, where space, time and human ambition briefly intersect. Yet make no mistake, they will try again on March 23rd with the world's gaze firmly fixed upon them, all systems hopefully go, destined once more for the great cosmic ballet that is human spaceflight. And now, let's venture into the realm of cosmic enigmas with some astonishing news from the James Webb Space Telescope. Prepare to recalibrate your understanding of the universe because Webb's latest discovery is like a plot twist in our cosmic narrative. The scope has picked up on something astounding. Massive black holes lurking in the heart of the earliest galaxies. Here's the kicker. These black holes have been hanging around since the universe's toddler years, a time when we thought it was just stars lighting up the void of space. This finding has us scratching our heads because, according to the cosmic playbook we've been using, black holes this big weren't supposed to show up on the scene until much later. This fresh insight courtesy of Webb's infrared eyes, threw us a curveball by spotting an ensemble of small red dots. These are not just any ordinary specks on the cosmic canvas. They are the beginnings, the ancient galaxies sprouting soon after the Big Bang. But wait, it doesn't stop there. These galaxies aren't just hanging out with stars. They've apparently got roommates, quasars, the most luminous objects known in the universe. And these quasars are kind of like the celestial celebrities with powerful gravity, courtesy of the massive black holes they harbour. So, what does this mean? It means our telescopes are catching star formation and black hole growth happening in tandem, stirring up a cosmic cocktail that has scientists rethinking the very processes of galaxy formation. It's almost as if the universe said, let's start the party early. 
bringing together stars and black holes to grow together in what could be described as an astronomical bromance. Now, as researchers look to the heavens via the James Webb Space Telescope, they're drafting a new galactic playbook. They're weighing in on a new era where young galaxies and their black holes came up in the world together. Their growth intertwined like roots in fertile cosmic soil. But here's another twist. Eventually, these nurturing black holes switch gears and start hogging the gas, stifling future starbirth. It's a bit of cosmic tough love that's got astronomers on the edge of their seats. In all honesty, this surprising symmetry between stars and black holes is shaking the foundation of galactic evolution as we know it. The James Webb Space Telescope, the gift that keeps on giving, is helping us uncover secrets of a universe that's as enigmatic as it is beautiful. So, stay tuned. The cosmos has plenty more secrets to spill. Imagine a robotic explorer with 18 propellers soaring through the pinky red skies of Mars, scoping out the landscape with a keen electronic eye. This isn't a scene from a sci-fi blockbuster, it's a peek into a potential future with Maggie, the Mars aerial and ground intelligent explorer. This ingenious concept, now being nudged forward by NASA's Innovative Advanced Concepts program, packs a punch that could revolutionise the way we scout out the Martian terrain. Picture this, Maggie launching atop a rocket, cruising across the vast distances of space for eight months and finally entering Martian airspace. Shrouded in its heat shield, it parachutes down, dances past the thin atmosphere and, discarding its protective gear, relies on a jetpack-savvy sky crane to land delicately on the dusty surface. Once its wheels kiss the ground, the real magic happens. Solar panels unfurl, and all 18 propellers buzz to life, ready to slice through the alien air. Now, on Mars, speed is relative, and though Maggie is slated to hit what's dubbed Mach 0.25, the thin shroud of Martian air means it's zipping at a brisk 210 kph. That's faster than any Martian dust devil can spin, and when its solar panels drink in that weak sun, watch out. Maggie could potentially rack up over 16,000 kilometres in a single Martian year, painting a detailed picture of a world waiting to be known. This aerial ace isn't just a flight of fancy. Its inventive CoFlow jet technology boosts lift and shaves off drag, keeping those propellers spinning even in Mars's stingy atmosphere, where the air is a mere whisper of Earth's. As the Martian winter draws in, the air grows leaner and Maggie's design brilliance shines even brighter. The coming months could see this exploratory phenom shift from paper to prototype if the Phase 2 development baton is past its way. Maggie's scientific mission could pass through mysteries from Martian magnetism to those puzzling methane plumes that have had scientists scratching their heads. And just think of the vistas it could share, giving us all a bird's eye view of the undulating dunes and rugged outcrops of a distant, desolate beauty that is Mars. Our hat's off to the imagination that dreams up travellers like Maggie, for it's these bold ideas that propel us beyond the confines of our own sky and onto the next frontier of interplanetary discovery. Keep your eyes on the stars and your hearts hitched to the trailblazing spirit of explorations like Maggie's, because, my fellow space enthusiasts, the future of Martian exploration is taking flight. The Astronomy Daily Podcast. Brown dwarfs, those fascinating celestial quasi-stars, always on the brink of stardom but never quite lighting up the stage. Picture something larger than our Jupiter, yet not hefty enough to go full-on star with thermonuclear fireworks. These cosmic objects lead quite the mysterious life, and thanks to the sharp eyes of NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, we're peeling back another layer of that mystery, the lonely journey they embark upon as they age. Recent surveys point to a rather solitary endgame for these substellar wonders. Initially, they may start out with a cosmic partner, a binary buddy, if you will, gyrating through space in an elegant gravitational dance. But as the eons pass, the ties that bind them weaken. Hubble's gaze revealed something rather unexpected. Old brown dwarfs prefer going solo, even if that means they drift through the vast emptiness of space with no companion to accompany them. Why the breakup? It's not a question of cosmic irreconcilable differences, but rather the delicate gravitational balance that once held them together. 
As they wander, other celestial objects passing by tug and tease at these bonds. So eventually, any sort of cosmic till death do us part is off the table. What we're witnessing is akin to a gentle decoupling of celestial conjoined twins. Over time, these once close-knit pairs separate, often prompted by the gravitational meddling of stars that pass by a little too close for comfort. This isn't just space gossip about the stellar social lives of brown dwarfs. It's a peek into the evolutionary path these objects take and a broader understanding of astronomical relationships. By observing both the young, closely knit binaries and the aged, lonesome brown dwarfs, we learn more about the life cycles of such objects and the mechanisms behind their eventual solitary wanderings. So, despite their failed attempt at true stardom, brown dwarfs managed to leave an indelible dark mark on our cosmic understanding, a testament to the ever-changing dynamism of the universe. And even as they continue their lonely march across the cosmos, they keep unveiling the often hidden and isolated paths that many objects in the universe may tread. Picture this. The moon, our celestial neighbour, silently drifting in the backdrop of the infinite cosmos. But that quiet isn't just poetic. It's scientifically invaluable, especially on the far side, shielded from the constant chatter of radio waves from Earth. That's right, the far side of the moon is like the universe's naturally enforced quiet zone, perfect for the kind of deep space astronomy that gets nerds like me excited to get out of bed in the morning. Now, here's the catch. As we're gearing up to return to the moon with more gusto than we've had in decades, this pristine radio silence is under threat. Imagine the cacophony of an interstellar construction zone, except the jackhammers a spacecraft beaming back data over radio frequencies, scrambling the very signals we hope to study from the universe's early days. For radio astronomers, the moon's far side is the promised land, a potential site for telescopes that could peer back over 13 billion years to the universe's dark ages before galaxies lit up the void. See. Out there, nestled away from Earth's noisy embrace, they could decode the secrets of cosmic evolution and possibly even intercept a whisper from an extraterrestrial civilization if such a thing exists. That's why there's been this rallying cry, a push from astronomers and concerned scientists at international symposiums demanding that we keep the Moon's far side a sanctuary for science. They're fighting the good fight to establish policies and treaties to protect this unique spot. Frankly, it's a race against time. Each new satellite whizzing around the moon, each rover trudging through its dust, brings us one step closer to a clouded future where the universe's whispers might be drowned out by our own cosmic racket. So, as we cheer on the boundless advances of space travel, let's not forget to advocate for this lunar oasis of quiet, to protect it not just for the astronomers of today, but for the knowledge seekers of tomorrow. It's a delicate balance, preserving the silence necessary to unlock the universe's grandest mysteries, all while our footprints mark the selenian soil. This is one chaser where staying silent means winning the race. And that brings us to the end of our stellar trek on Astronomy Daily, the podcast. If you enjoyed listening to our cosmic tales, there's a whole constellation of episodes waiting for you. Head over to astronomydaily.io to catch up on past episodes, sign up for our free newsletter, and get the latest updates from our constantly refreshed newsfeed. It's your one-stop celestial hub. Enjoying Astronomy Daily? We'd love it if you could take a moment to leave us a brief review. Your thoughts help us navigate the vast podcast cosmos and are as valuable as a supernova in the night sky. Just click on the Reviews tab on the website. And a reminder, the void of space won't stay silent for long. Steve and Halley will be back on Monday, orbiting through the latest in space and astronomy news. Until then, keep your eyes to the skies and your curiosity boundless. Clear skies and happy stargazing until we meet again. This is your reporter, Charlie, saying bye for now and thank you for joining me on this episode of Astronomy Daily, the podcast. The Astronomy Daily Podcast.